say something about a recent paper with uh, Johannes Brother and Oliver Schlott uh, um, about how to try to go from open to, cons to close strings uh, in genus one. So this is something that people uh, have uh, studied in genus zero, in genus uh, yeah zero okay. since the 80s, and uh, and this is a first result in genus one. So let me start with genus zero. So maybe many of you know what multiple polylogarithms are. Uh, so multiple polylogarithms are holomorphic multivalued functions uh, on the Riemann sphere, given for the absolute value of z less than 1 by this uh, nested uh, sum representation. The fact that they are multivalued function over the whole complex sphere comes from the fact that they have an integral representation, uh, which allows to analytically extend the function uh, to a multivalued function that depends on the path of integration. And uh, Maybe you also know the definition of multiple zeta values, which are uh, real numbers given for uh, KR bigger equal than 2, otherwise uh, this series is not convergent, by the special values of multiple polylogarithms at z equal 1. <coughs> so these are numbers that are well known to all people working with amplitudes because they show up uh, at least uh, since the 90s, people started seeing these in quantum theory computations. And it's the case also for string amplitudes. So my first remark about multiple zeta values is that if you consider the vector space generated by multiple zeta values over rational numbers that I call z from now on, this is actually a Q algebra. So if you multiply multiple zeta values, then you can rewrite them as linear combination of multiple zeta values. And in this Q algebra, you have a lot of relations. Um, both linear and algebraic relations. So the simplest one you can think of is <coughs> the fact that zeta of 1, 2 is equal to zeta of 3. And this also is a good example because it shows you that this number r is actually, uh, which is called the length of the multiple zeta values, is actually something which is not well defined. I mean, you can you can maybe define it as the, as the smallest uh, possible length. So for instance, for zeta 1, 2 should be 1. But on the other side, uh, from a mathematical viewpoint, it just means it's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, grading, it's just a filtration on this Q algebra. And uh, what's the smallest possible multiple zeta value which you can write uh, as a length like 2 multiple zeta values and you cannot reduce it further? This is zeta of 3 pi. So uh, assuming some very standard conjectures, because this you cannot prove it actually. But uh, assuming standard conjectures on this space of multiple zeta values, then zeta 3 pi is the smallest possible multiple zeta value, and which cannot be reduced <coughs> further. And this will be important in what follows. So let me also remark that if you have only zeta of 3, zeta of 4, zeta of 5, the single zeta values, these are just special values of the Riemann zeta function. OK, now I want to define what single valued multiple zeta values are. Francis Brown defined what um, define a single valued version of multiple polylogarithms, which is uh, real analytic. You cannot have both holomorphicity and single valuedness to the puncture complex uh, projective line. And uh, I don't want to give you the full definition, but let me just say that if you have your Li, K1, Kr, then you can associate uh, curly L, K1, Kr of Z. Um, and for instance, uh, the simplest possible uh, multiple polylogarithm, which is just Li1 of Z, which is uh, minus log of 1 minus Z, uh, you associate to it uh, just uh, its uh, basically its real part, which is minus log of the absolute value of 1 minus Z to the square. And uh, again, Francis Brown, uh, a few years ago, studied the special values at one of these single valued multiple polylogarithms. And he showed that, uh, you, I mean, he called them zeta single value. And he showed that, that if you consider, again, the uh, rational linear combination of single valued multiple zeta values, then this is, again, an algebra in which is contained in the algebra of multiple zeta values, which is not obvious from 
the definition it gives. And actually, it's much, much smaller. So this is a much smaller space. Let me give you some examples. So zeta single value of 2k for any k is just 0. So all the even Riemann zeta values vanish. And the odd Riemann zeta values are mapped to two times uh, themselves. What we call the, the, the first irreducible multiple zeta values actually factorizes as, uh, as single zeta values uh, in this single value space. And so to go to the first irreducible uh, with, that, with length higher than one single value multiple zeta value, you have to go to weight 11, so zeta, seven, uh, zeta single value of 353, which has this representation. And this will also be important in what follows. <coughs> OK, so let me tell you something about um, scattering amplitudes in string theory now. So it's known since the, actually this was, uh, so string theory was born out of the study of amplitudes in the end of the 60s. And uh, you see here uh, what is called the Veneziano amplitude, which is just basically the Euler beta function. And it's well known that you can write this Euler beta function uh, in the following way. and these zeta of n are just the single zeta values, and this shows that the coefficients of this formal power series expansion, so these variables are, um, are called the Mandelstam variables, and we will see later more precisely what's the definition. But the coefficients of this kind of expansion are just uh, Riemann zeta values. And uh, uh, shortly after, appeared the Lira solo amplitude, which is uh, which I will explain what's the physical meaning soon, but first of all, let me just tell you, you consider this complex beta integral, and then something happened here. You consider this complex beta integral, and it's a little bit more complicated, but you can show, again, you have this expansion, and in this expansion, only the odd Riemann zeta values appear. And uh, the Venetian amplitude has the meaning of the scattering amplitude of four open strings in genus zero, and the Virasoro amplitude, the scattering amplitude of four closed strings in genus zero. And uh, a remark is that if you apply formally this single value map on the Veneziano amplitude, then you get exactly the Virasoro amplitude if you just define it to give alpha and beta as they are and act only on the coefficients because all the even zeta values are set to zero, and the odd zeta values, which have this minus sign, are set to two times themselves. So let me now give you uh, the general picture of number of theoretical aspects of superstring amplitudes, so that you will have situation a bit more clear. So uh, as you as you may know, when you want to compute um, scattering amplitudes in string theory. Here I give the example of four closed strings. You consider the analog of Feynman diagrams in, uh, in the string case. And you can write your amplitude as a, as a series over all the possible genera of, of these surfaces. And it turns out that all you want to do to compute your Feynman integrals is to do an integral over a compactified moduli spaces of Riemann surfaces with more points of certain differential forms that I will define later only in some cases. And this is something particularly appealing for uh, mathematicians, for a number of theorists like me, because these integrals have a much neater structure than integrals appearing in quantum field theory. And indeed, the number theory appearing is, is way more uh, clear. Because you have, as I said, in genus zero with four points is the Venetian amplitude, and you have the Riemann single zeta values, and in a closed string case, just the odd ones. And if you have more than four points, then you start getting all possible multiple zeta values. So you see the first irreducible ones, zeta of 3 pi. And in a closed string case, um, again, you have to go a little bit uh, to higher weight, and you find this zeta single value of 3, 5, 3, and, and you get all the possible multiple zeta values. And it is conjecture, actually, that you can pass from open string to closed strings in for any number of points with this single-valued map defined by Francis Brown. 
Let me also tell you that it's not the only way to pass from open strings to closed strings, because uh, I think in the 80s, um, people discovered this KLT relation, which realizes closed strings, in some sense, as a double copy of open strings. But this is only for genus 0. So nothing is known for genus 1. Something is known about the kind of number theoretical objects appearing. In open string case, you find something which is called elliptic multiple zeta values, which was defined about five years ago by mathematicians, and shortly after uh, was studied by physicists in relation to this problem. And the closed string amplitudes, uh, you have these uh, modular graph functions, which were defined by Michael Green and collaborators. Um, which are basically very interesting objects in mathematics and very mysterious objects in mathematics. And this is what I started studying during my PhD thesis. And, uh, and today I want to tell you how elliptic multiple zeta values and modular graph function relates and give you also uh, some kind of idea of how an analog of this single valued map appearing in genus zero may be seen also in genus one. Let me just tell you very briefly that Genus 2, there is something known in the, in the closed string case, but for genus higher than 2, nothing is known. And actually, at some point, people don't even know how to define the amplitude. And the main uh, people working on this, uh, <coughs> on this table that you see here are, are written in the screen. But it's, it's easy for genus because and 2, it's a problem. Is a technical problem or is a matter of principle? Integration measure, integration measure of the modular space. Is yes. it uh, unknown or it's impossible to construct? And what are the standards for the GDP? Now, there are some other ways to construct the generalization of this integral mathematically, but there is some uh, physics problem as far as I understand. So, so these integrals that you would construct don't match what you actually require in super string theory. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me tell you something about you correctly under limits, right? I mean, under under singular configurations where you bring genus two down to genus one pitch point, things like that. They, those analyses, I think. Excuse. Me? If you restrict the integral to singular genus two surfaces that are yes. basically a pinched yes. torus, mm -hmm. then I think uh, you can do the analysis. The physics simplifies. The analysis simplifies. I think things are understood there. Uh, yes, that's what people did actually in genus 2 to study yeah. genus 2 amplitudes, yes. Yeah. But for higher genus, uh, yeah. there are problems. Okay, so let me tell you about, uh, um, about genus 1. So in genus 1, uh, the modular space of, of Riemann surface is more complicated because, um, because uh, you can if you have the, your integral over m1n, then you can fix one point and uh, consider the modular space m11 of complex tori with one mark point. And, and this uh, set of possible complex structures is encoded by a variable tau in the upper left plane, which I denote tau1 plus i tau2. So you consider a, a complex torus. You consider a variable z on this complex torus, and you consider this standard green function on the torus, g1, which I call g1 closed because I will have a, also an open propagator later, uh, where theta is the odd Jacobi theta function and, and eta is the Debekin theta function. And the four point closed string amplitude is defined in the following way. So here I'm giving something a bit more precise than before. You have, as I said, you, you can fix one point, then you have your integral over moduli space m11, so d tau, well here you have to choose a measure actually. I'm not, I'm not seeing actual, I mean, I don't want to talk about this integral today. And then you have this configuration space of three points varying on a torus. And I assume that z4 is fixed, and I consider this integral. So these SIJs here are just formal variables for me, but they are physical variables depending on alpha prime and, uh, and the moment of the strings. Good, so as I said, I'm not interested in inner integration. So as you see, I just delete this integral and consider 
this part of the integral. So how do you compute this integral? Um, so this was done first by Michael Green and Pierre Vanoff in the end of the, of the 90s. So you consider the power series with respect to the mandas and variables, so you expand the exponential. And the coefficients of this generating series are given by the following integrals of products of powers of this propagator, which, as you've seen, is kind of a complicated function. So it's, it's very complicated to, to study this integral. And these are called modular graph functions. So graph functions because you can think of gamma. Uh, so you can think of this integral as giving you a graph for each choice of the LIJs because you can fix your your vertices as the integration variables and then anytime you have a propagator between the two vertices then you uh, then you put an edge. And the total number of edges is the weight of the graph. I will give you some examples later. So this is I for simplicity I just talked about four point amplitude which gives you four point modular graph functions. You can formally replace uh, everything by n here and get modular graph functions uh, for any n-dimensional integral. They don't give you all the possible contribution to the string amplitude with n points. But still, it's a very interesting class of functions. And today, I'm thinking actually of this general case with n uh, integra integrations. So an example is the following. You have the following graph. So it's, it's a polygon, Pn, with n vertices. And one can show, it's not completely trivial, but it's quite easy, that you can write the modular graph function in the following way. And this is just the nonomorphic Eisenstein series. So this is the po simplest possible example of modular graph functions with just one cycle. And it's already some non-trivial uh, mathematical object. Wait, wait, it's, 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 this particular example was integral in first form. So there's a function that is example of the integration in the previous slide. Yes. You have shown the general form of this integral. Yes. yes. So, 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 this, 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 so there's a general definition, and the next slide is a particular choice of the graph. Yeah, as I said, yeah. I didn't give the general definition. I just gave the four-point amplitude. So, so here, with this definition, you can get only dp2, <coughs> uh, dp3, and dp4. But yes, but this is a, a family. It's, it's a very simple family where you choose only one propagator. So you have an integral over, uh, let's say, p to the p to the n. And then you have z1, uh, so you have g1 closed of z1 minus z2, g1 closed of z1 minus z3, and so on. You take all the possible uh, green functions. Sorry, you want the g2 minus g3. So you take all the possible green functions as there. But the power here is always 1. So that's why they are so easy. And if you increase the power, will you end up with the same class of function, or it will be different function? No, there will be different function. If you put a 2 here, then you have this graph. I uh, might will, will get Einstein series as different in this No, they're more, they're more complicated. Actually, that's what I want to talk about. So modular graph functions in general are very complicated functions. So obviously, you know that there is this uh, eigenvalue Laplace eigenvalue equation for the Eisenstein series. So you can say that this equation is always true. And uh, people notice that actually uh, modular graph functions in general behave nicely with respect to Laplace operator. And so this is just an example of a relation found by Dogger, Green, and Van Hoff in a paper where they actually give infinitely many of these kind of relations. Uh, so yeah, I have this nice kind of representation now for these modular graph functions. And uh, using these kind of differential relations, people were able to prove linear or algebraic relations among modular graph functions. So Zagin, like five years ago, proved this relation, which is the first relation non-trivial relation proof but on, uh, about the uh, modular graph functions. And then later, people uh, understood how to do these kind of proofs and, and could prove something like this. So this is a, a weight 6 relation, where, I, as I said, I call the weight the number of edges. 
but people don't know what's the general structure, algebraic and differential structure of this modular graph function. So it's still very mysterious. They can do maybe some infinite family, but in general they don't know what to do. Well, wait, wait, you say that Zagay is the first one, and what is the difference between the one just above? And the the is, well, first of all, um, first of all, Zagay used a completely different method. He didn't use differential equation, and he proved this before they proved this. Okay. But but. On the other side, this relation can be proved very easily once you know what's, what differential equations are, right? And so, uh, in some sense, it makes sense to first say that they satisfy differential equation because that's the way people usually prove this kind of uh, algebraic relations. But this is true that the, the differential equation, the coming back to my question. So, Zagier basically telling you that this uh, graph with C lines is expressed in terms of the Eisenstein series. Yes. And the first, the differential equation above doesn't tell you which function it is. No, the differential equation, you can just say that they satisfy the same Laplace equation, yeah. and, then you, and then you can prove, I mean, then you can look at the things killed by the Laplace equation and then see that they're equal. So that's the easiest possible way to prove a relation like this. But they can prove it in an amazingly complicated way. And, um, yeah. And then, let me tell you some properties of these functions. So, as I said, they're modular graph function for some reason. They the 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 depend on tau. I mean, yes, here I removed the dependence on tau. I'm sorry, but in the definition, if you remember, they they depend on tau here and here. So they're they're functions of tau. And when you write when you talk about differential equation, it's with really respect, really respect, really respect to tau. Yes, it's with respect to tau. They are modular invariant. Uh, with respect to the action of S and Z, that's something you, you want to compute your, your amplitude. And that's very easy to see. Then, as I said, there are many algebraic and differential relations proved mostly by these people here. Then, in my during my thesis, I proved the following statement. So I studied asymptotic expansion of these functions. And, uh, and it can be written in the following way. So you have certain complex coefficients. Then you have uh, y, which is ranging from 1 minus the weight of the graph until the weight <coughs> of the graph, and then you have an expansion in QQ bar. Uh, and I also proved that these uh, numbers can be written as special values of multiple polylogarithms at roots of unity. But I also found an algorithm to compute these numbers, which are in, in general very difficult to compute for uh, complicated graphs, and uh, realized that you always seem to land on single valued multiple zeta values, which is the same that happened in genus zero for the closed strings. And so I conjecture that you would always get these single valued multiple zeta values. And this is still an open conjecture. Um, then Zagier so considered the family of banana graphs, the n, which are just, I mean, you have n edges between two points. So these are all the possible two point graphs and proved that the coefficients dk0,0, zero, zero, so you consider the, the very first term in this expansion, n equals 0, n equals 0, you have a Lohan polynomials. The coefficients of the lo this Lohan polynomial are polynomials in the odd zeta values. So this would confirm, in this very simple case, uh, part of this conjecture that I'm stating here, because you don't see the, odd, the even zeta values, which are not single values. But in this case, uh, if, you, if you just put this, uh, 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 and equal to zero in the series, don't you expect that the function itself will be expressed in terms of single variable harmonic polynomials? Uh, the, the, the function ju is just now a Lacan polynomial. No, no, I, I want to resum. My question is if I, if I were to resum the whole series for m n equal to zero, could you resum it? Then it will be the function of y. With yes. the expression at, at zeta to k plus one. What kind of function it corresponds to? If, if you set m and n equal to zero, you get just a Lorentz polynomial. It's just a polynomial with positive and negative powers of y, and that's that's it. And uh, it's not nothing like a, a relational gamma function. If you're Absolutely sure. not, no, mm -hmm. because this bound is is true for any fixed m and n. So it's just you oh, just okay. know exactly sure. what you're getting. Yeah. Actually, this is not a trivial thing. I yeah. mean, if this is not bounded and you have a Lorentz polynomial, but you don't have a bound, then you don't know which kind of function you're talking about. Okay, and then, uh, as I said, I have an algorithm to compute this kind of Lohan polynomial, so, uh, so you can 
expand with m n, and you get these Lohan polynomials for any m and n. And I started computing some very non trivial ones. So, for instance, this weight 7 graph, which you, you cannot do by hand. And the answer is the following is the first time you finally encounter something which is not just product of odd Riemann zeta values, but is some irreducible multiple zeta values, but it's exactly the combination of irreducible multiple zeta values, which can be rewritten in terms of single value multiple zeta values in weight 11. And this also appears in higher weight. So it's kind of a, doesn't look like a coincidence. So that's why I conjecture that you only get single value multiple zeta values. OK. So now let me tell you something about all the string entities. So in the open case, I don't want to define exactly what's the propagator. Let me just tell you that it's uniquely determined by the following two things. So it's derivative. So it's, it's an holomorphic function now. It's not real analytic anymore. Its derivative is just the quotient of theta prime over theta, the object of the theta function. And I want to set the integral from 0 to 1 of this function equal to 0. Then the four point, again, I want just to write down the very simplest case. Four point open string amplitude is given now by, uh, you, you only consider tau on the path from i to i infinity, <coughs> purely imaginary tau. And then you have your punctures uh, organized uh, from 0 to 1 in the following way. So why do you get an integral like this? Because you have four open strings scattering. And here, I put the hole because you are in genus 1. And you can think of this as a cylinder, actually, with insertions. I make insertions only on one boundary here. But in our paper, we consider insertion on the two boundaries. And it's important the order of insertions. And that's why you have this uh, x1, x2, x3. It's an iterative integral. And again, we're all interested in the inner integration. I don't, I don't want to think of, of this integration over tau. And uh, well, I didn't see, I, I didn't tell you what's the, what's the propagator. So it doesn't really make sense to tell you what's the result of the integral. But people can compute this, these integrals now because, uh, well, it was shown by Grothen, Mathe, Mathe, and Schlotter that if you expand with respect to Mandelstam variables, then you can write these integrals in terms of elliptic multiple, a elliptic multiple zeta values, which I denote by IA, but I don't want to define today. There are certain functions of tau, which are well known uh, in mathematics. The integrals are easy to compute in terms of elliptic multiple zeta values. So everything is easy and can be computed. And it's really on the nose, a elliptic multiple zeta values. So there's really not much to, to do. They just need to be defined. Um, OK, the only problem is that it's very complicated to relate elliptic multiple zeta values to modular graph functions. This is a very complicated problem. People thought about this for some time. Expectation, looking at genus 0, is that modular graph functions should be single valued elliptic multiple zeta values in some sense, but it's not easy to make clear how. So, so what we proposed in our work is to consider this abelianization of the inner integral in the sense that we consider abelian states. So here, you have this iterative integral, and we just consider the integral over the square. So we consider all possible configurations of points in here, and sum over all the possible configurations. And then again, the recipe is to expand exponential with respect to the Mandelstam variables, and the coefficients are, have been called in our paper, a cycle graph function. So they are uh, basically the same thing you've seen in, in, uh, in the closed string case. But here you have 0, 1, 2, 3 instead of the, of the full torus. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. You have powers of propagators among a uh, couple of particles. And I call it a cycle because, because if you think that you are on a torus, 1, Tau, then usually people call this the A cycle of the torus and this the B cycle. And we are integrating over 0, 1. So 
so a cycle graph function and you can express it in terms of a cycle multiple zeta values, elliptic multiple zeta values. Again, I call the number of edges the weight of the graph. Okay, and, and then we study these functions. These functions can be expressed again in terms of these a elliptic multiple zeta values, so we know how to compute these functions. They're much, much easier than the modular graph functions. And, uh, and one can easily prove a relation like this. So I didn't define what are elliptic multiple zeta values, just take it as a black box. And if you look at the relations that you have for modular graph function proved by Zagier, they look very similar. Uh, the only thing you have to do to pass from this one to this one is to kill this term and multiply by 2 this term. And, uh, well, if you consider a slightly more complicated relation of this kind, again involving this elliptic multiple zeta values, and you look at the analogous relation for the modular graph functions, well, you see that you just send this term to 0, this term to 0, this term to 0, and you get exactly the same relation. And a last example in weight 5 is this one. But we have examples also in weight 6. Yeah. Actually, we have checked all the possible relations. And in all cases, we have seen that the recipe is very simple. You just take a relation among a cycle modular graph functions, and then you send your multiple zeta values to single value multiple zeta values, which kill all the even zeta values and send to two times the odd Riemann zeta values, and you get the relations between modular graph functions. So this was our first observation. So, yeah, let me tell you something um, about uh, more about these elliptic multiple zeta values. So this is actually the only thing you need to know about them. Enriquez, who defined elliptic multiple zeta values in 2013, uh, proved that you, they, they have an asymptotic expansion like that, so they have a Fourier expansion. And these coefficients, a, j, n, of this Fourier expansion are expressible in terms of multiple zeta values, which is this set set, and inverse powers of 2 pi i. So they really are a generalization of multiple zeta values for many reasons. This is one of the possible reasons, but there are deeper reasons. So th the problem is that if you look at this expansion, this is completely different from the kind of expansion uh, of modular graph functions. So you would like to compare these two things, but it's, it's really, it looks hopeless if you look at this very simple expansion here to get something like that, where you have not only q and q bar, but the logarithm. And, uh, and uh, the solution we found to get rid of this problem is to consider the modular transformation of these functions. So now, elliptic multiple zeta values don't behave nicely with respect to the full modular group. They behave nicely with respect to tau going to tau plus 1, but tau going to minus 1 over tau, they, they behave badly. And, uh, but they behave nicely for us because you can prove that the asymptotic expansion of this modular transformation of your uh, elliptic multiple zeta values and so of the, of the A cycle graph function as an, as an asymptotic expansion like this, where you have this t to the k, which is pi i tau, which reminds of this y to the k that you had for modular graph functions. Okay. And again, the expansion is bounded here. But for the difference that uh, the, the previous disclosed case, it didn't have holomorphicity. Now we're talking about holomorphic function, right? So yes, exactly. How, how, how you get no holomorphic function out of holomorphic? Sorry? How could you get non holomorphic function out of holomorphic? Yes, that's what I am going to tell. But, okay. but in general, that's the usual recipe also in Geno Zero if you want to pass from, from multiple polylogarithms to their single valid version, you have to give up holomorphism. So you have the logarithm of z, which is holomorphic and multivalued, and then you go to the logarithm of the absolute value of z, which is not holomorphic anymore, but it's single value. So that's the general idea. OK, and then how do you see now a relation between open and closed string amplitudes if you consider these b cycle graph functions? Uh, well, uh, let me just denote the expansion in this way. So you have for each j, you have a Lohan polynomial in tau, in t. 
And I call the first Lorentz polynomial, so the, the, the constant term on this expansion, just uh, uh, b, uh, b of gamma. And then we have, for instance, this example. You consider a non-trivial graph. And you can compute this polynomial. And there is a reason why I, call, uh, why I choose this variable minus t over 2. So this is not so complicated to compute as in the case of modular graph function. It's still non-trivial. We have we had to develop some technique to do this, but it basically relies on something which was already done by Francis Brown. And uh, well, in the, the, the corresponding modular graph function has the first Lorentz polynomial of this form. And and now, if you just look at these coefficients and these coefficients, and then this coefficient and this coefficient and so on, actually you see immediately that if you apply this single valued map and you set all the even zeta values to zero and the odd zeta values to two times themselves, I hope. Okay, maybe there is some typo. But I, I believe me that this should be this should be fine. And we checked it for all possible uh, Lorentz polynomial up to weight six. Um, then we were led to the second conjecture, which is to take the Lohan polynomial of the cycle graph function, and you set zeta k to zeta single value k and t to minus 2 y. And you get, you land on the Lohan polynomial of modular graph function, which are very hard to compute. Uh, let me give you also a very non trivial example. I consider again this graph there which is the same graph where I first noticed single value multiple zeta values for modular graph functions. Its B-cycle counterpart is very complicated, but can be computed. And, uh, and you see immediately that here something non-trivial happens. So you have the zeta 353, you have this zeta, uh, somewhere it should be a zeta, well you have zeta 3 sen, zeta 2, zeta 3, 5, zeta 2, so you have non-trivial things, but, uh, well, if you look at this coefficient, you can actually see that uh, you apply the single valued map and it gives you back the coefficient of the corresponding modular graph function. So I'm concluding very, very early, but that's good, so we have a little bit of time. Uh, so my final comments are the following. So Computing A-cycle graph functions is simple. So conjecture one, which gives you from the relations among A-cycle graph functions, the relations among modular graph functions, is a very powerful tool to detect uh, algebraic relations. And actually, we have an analog of conjecture one also for the differential equation, so for this uh, Laplace equation that I've shown you. I didn't want to mention today, but we have uh, exactly the same kind of argument. And, uh, well, as I said, there is a general algorithm to compute term by term the sympathetic expansion of B cycle graph functions. And so conjecture Q provides a general algorithm to compute the asymptotic expansion of modular graph functions, which are the hard objects, the closed string objects. But in practice, we didn't really use th this general algorithm that exists, but we used uh, a, mo a more efficient way, which is to use Francis Brown theory of iterated Euclidean integrals and multiple modular values, which is some deep uh, theory uh, developed uh, a few years ago by Francis Brown. And therefore, we had to approximate our constants, but we could get a good precision very easily. So, so these constants are correct. And then you can afterwards, if you really want to, check with this algorithm, which will take may maybe various days to check this, but can be checked. And, uh, and uh, let me also say something that since we have used this method by Francis Brown, I mean, we had also another goal. We wanted to get a close formula for modular graph function, which is something you cannot get in general, except for this very simple case of, of the polygons. So this, this non-homorphic Eisenstein series are the only close formula representation of modular graph functions. And, uh, and uh, and indeed, we got conjecturally a way to write uh, our modular graph functions in terms of a closed formula. So you consider these iterated accurate integrals of Eisenstein series. 
and uh, you just take the real part and uh, conjecturally you land exactly a modular graph function. So, so this is a little bit uh, less than a conjecture, let's say. We are not completely sure we believe this for some reason. Maybe it can go wrong for higher uh, number of particles. So we have reason to, to be a little bit uh, skeptical, but for the example we have seen, it works perfectly well, and you get for the first time a full expansion of modular graph functions uh, for free. But the, sorry, sorry for the question. What those iterated integral? So I don't know if you are familiar with Eichler integrals, the usual one. So you can feel I have a modular form, F. It's a modular form of weight K. Then the Eichler integrals of this modular form is any, uh, any F tilde such that uh, the 1 over 2 pi i uh, d over d tau the k minus 1 of f tilde is equal to i. So this is an accurate integral of a modular form. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that you can write this f. So, so this f is determined up to a polynomial of degree k minus 2. And you can write uh, one of this f, which is in some sense more standard, as an integral. So you write integral from tau to I infinity, let me say, of uh, of z minus tau to k minus two uh, f of z dz. So you have this integral representation of the Euler integral, and the iterated Euler integrals are just iterated integrals of this kind. And in each step, you want to add actually uh, another. So this is f1, and then you have a f2, and then you have f3 here. So this is an iterated Euler integral. It's some very interesting objects from the point of view of, of modular forms. And, um, and using these kind of objects, you can get the full expansion of modular graph functions. So the conclusion is the following. In Geno zero, you know that you can pass from open to closed strings, both with the KLT relations and conjecture with this single value projection. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, this single value projection for n bigger than 4 is not proven yet. It's just conjectural thing, even in genus 0. And what we did is to provide a conjectural analog of this single value projection in genus 0, which we call ESV, elliptic single value projection. And uh, a final remark is that uh, Francis Brown introduced a, a single valued map, so mathematically, on the space of iterated Euler integrals, which are the things I was talking about here. And he conjectured that modular graph function should be contained in the image of this map. If this conjecture is true, then also the conjecture I made about single valued multiposita values in the, in the expansion is true. And actually, also all the conjectures given algebraic relations or uh, differential relations are true, but but this is still a conjecture. So, in the future, we would like to compare our map with Francis Brown's map and and see what happens. So yes, here is everything. Is one thing which I didn't understand. So when you're talking about genus zero, so there was one term map between open, closed, link amplitude. Yes. But when you're talking about genus one, you measure this idealization. Yes. And if I understood correctly, you start from the integral which was integral for open string amplitude. Yes. And then you modify it just to remove other end of the points on the yeah. boundary. So which means that kind of it's not if you compare genus zero to genus one, genus one you're introducing some kind of new object which let's think is speaking open string amplitude. Yes, but, but, what I, but what does it, what this procedure means for? If I were to introduce KLT relation for genus one, mm -hmm. what is corresponding? So the problem is that this in genus zero, the map, the single valued map from open to closed strings is com something completely different from the KLT relation. Mm -hmm. So what we're finding here is an analog of this single valued map. Mm -hmm. So we are not trying to generalize KLT in genus mm -hmm. one actually. Mm -hmm. So it's. It's an open question in genus zero how to relate KLT and single valid map. And then this could give also a hint in genus one. But, but if, if, if I were not to introduce this, I, 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 
So abelization. So if I speak this thing and comparing closed new cavity with open cavity for genus one. So yes. I will put the different expressions. Mm -hmm. So what you are saying is that abelization corresponding to taking only combination of equal open new cavities. Mm -hmm. But uh, if once again, if I were not doing this, if I just put it for a particular integral which equal ordering of points for open Yes. You you will get something. Yes, but it's it's, 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 it's it they don't look. I mean, you, you don't know how to relate. So we try first with these iterated integrals that you get in uh, in the usual string theory, and then we <coughs> couldn't relate this with modular graph function. And we realized that we instead abelianize. So we consider the sum over all the possible uh, configurations. Then we have this relation really on the nodes. Mm -hmm. So. So I think that physically, um, this abelianization doesn't correspond to an amplitude in string theory because I think uh, this would correspond to photons and, and this is not allowed. So I, I'm not expert with this, but mm -hmm. um, but also in Geno Zero, I didn't tell you exactly how to pass from open to closed strings. Also there, you do some manipulations. It's not that you pass physically from the open string amplitude to the closed string amplitude. I mean, you have to do some. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Also, another question is that uh, basically you, uh, you were talking about coefficients which are given by the single variable mm -hmm. uh, always at argument one. So yes. those numbers. And, and then it, so you, you, you get expression which will are normal in y with the variables of those coefficients. Yes. But the next question is that once you have series which removes various of those coefficients at argument one, could you promote your expression to the functions? Mm -hmm. So my question is, we know, for example, that for uh, if you can do some equation of field theory, you'll not uh, with the fun single variable harmonic polyloids as a function of some variables, two variables. Mm -hmm. So now you have uh, uh, more complicated functions. My question is, uh, could I say that what you're saying, uh, there is this single variable harmonic polyloid functions, which are leading into the game, and you're explaining them around one, uh, argument being one. Does it make sense? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, makes sense. I mean, you can, if you have your, your integrals, of one over, so if you have your integral of z to the 2 alpha minus 2 and 1 minus z to the 2 beta minus 2, it turns out for some reason that if, if you, I mean, you have to do things, but if you put here another variable, u, and again you integrate with c to the square, then you will indeed get some, uh, some single valued polylog evaluated at u taking this because it's, it's uh, basically this is a residue computation and and it turns out that the only residue which comes is this one so in some sense yes you can deform your integral in various possible ways so this is just one possible way you can do it and get functions of u but this u i don't know what physical meaning would have i mean you, you would expect that the valuations of these functions would satisfy me more identities, if any, than, than the functional relations. I mean, the, wor the, the worry is that there is a, um, you need a bigger class of single-valued elliptic multipolar logarithms than, than the, the, the single-valued. These are the, the zeta, the analogs of the zeta values. <coughs> I'm not sure I understood. Sorry. Upgrading these numbers into functions Yes. Um, even if we have a, even if it's conjectural, but we have some understanding about the the uh, rational relations among among these numbers, um, it's not clear that that generalizes to the same. I mean, it's clear that those. Um, so I didn't tell you how to generalize multipositive values to elliptic multipositive values. No. So the reason why you can generalize multipositive values to elliptic multipositive values is that. Um, elip sorry, multiple poly logarithms are the item, the homotopy invariant iterated integrals over genus one punctures uh, Riemann surface. Mm -hmm. Elliptic polylogs are iterated integrals over genus one puncture Riemann surface. Yes. So, so it's completely clear why elliptic multiposita values are Especially the elliptic generalization of multiposita values. On the other <coughs> side, um, this construction by Francis Brown. Yeah tells you that uh, this class of function you define is the right single-valued uh, version of single-valued multiples the values in genus 1. Mm -hmm. And the conjecture is that multiple graph functions are contained there. So it should be now. Okay. 
if that's your question. <coughs> Thank you.